So far, my portfolio this year versus the major indexes is up quite a bit versus the big dogs like the S&P, the NASDAQ, the Dow, and the Russell 2000. Now, not only are we outperforming, but this is something that has come from a lot of big winners I've had over the last year, and this is it shown directly on Fidelity, but the companies that I'm owning has changed dramatically over this past month. This is my portfolio holdings. By the way, I need to edit this. should be now as of... 8-1 uh, now that we have the new month going up but right now you can see that this portfolio looks drastically different than it did just a month ago one of the big notable changes here is that we are no longer in amazon i've completely sold out i have booked my profits and i've rotated into other holdings additionally i've got a lot more conservative in the market i loaded up on a lot more cash i'm about twenty thousand dollars more in cash versus invested in the market on margin where i used to be and so far generally speaking i'm going to be a lot more conservative moving forward now that the market has gone up considerably and I need to protect myself in all scenarios. Now my actual positions by dollar amounts are going to be shown right here. These are the actual positions that I have right now. We have Crocs about $30,000 in. We have about $20,000 in Dropbox. We have about $12,000 in change in PayPal. We have a YOLO bet, a $2,000 play into GameStop that is going to come over the next two months or so as the movie's being released. Just a complete gamble. And then we have some covered calls in all three of my main positions for Crocs, Dropbox, and PayPal. Now you'll also notice here this little number down here, the negative 10,000. That is what I'm currently having on margin. Now this margin number last time around a month ago was probably somewhere around 40,000 or so. And this number moves around all the time. Now I'm not gonna say that there's no chance that I might take out any more margin, but more than likely if I do, it'll likely be to take out short plays. If I see a company that's gonna be overvalued or a specific movement in the market that I wanna bet against. But generally speaking, I'm not gonna be buying heavily right now because I don't see anything that I'm truly interested in. There's a couple companies that I'm looking at right now, and just to give you a couple that I'm really watching, one of them is Target. It's a company that's gone down significantly ever since this boycott over the last couple years. It's really gotten to prices that are starting to get pretty attractive. It's not quite at the levels where I want to pull the trigger at yet. But right now, around the 130 range, it's pretty decent. If it were to go into the 120s or especially the 110s or $100 range, I'll probably start chipping off shares. And then another one I'm also watching right now is CrowdStrike, but it's just too high. I can't stomach paying $145. I'd really like to at least pay in the 130s or 120s to start my position in this. It's pretty much trailed off over the last five years, especially ever since the 2021 run-up, but this is a company that's still highly priced despite that. But I know you like to talk about companies that I'm watching, but how about companies that I actually own? And I'll start from the smallest over to the largest, why I own them, and then I'll give dedicated videos over the next week or two into all these, because a lot of movements have happened each and every one of these companies has reported earnings just within the last month, so the storage for these companies has changed drastically. Well, I'll go ahead and start with the smallest one, and it won't take long for this. GameStop, this is a YOLO bet, completely irrational, very dumb, one that could, I could easily go to zero. This is just simply betting that over the next month, coming in September, I think that there's going to be a lot of hype for this movie that's going to be released, and I think the stock will likely go up, and I could easily make a couple quick thousand dollars if it were to pan out. If I'm wrong, I will definitely go to zero and I won't make any money, but I'm willing to take that risk. Who knows what could happen? We'll see. That's GameStop. Next up in line, we have PayPal. PayPal makes up around 20% of my portfolio, and this is one that is not done good. If you look here at my all-time performance on it, I'm down 3%, but it wasn't that long ago. Just a week or so ago, I was up around 10, 15% on this company. Let's go over the last month or three months. You can see that this company was all the way up to around $75, $76, which is a pretty decent gain considering I had it at 65 and I've only owned this company for a couple months now. I bought my shares around June, which is only about two months ago, and this company was doing okay and starting to recover until they reported their earnings. They dropped all the way from that $75 peak to where today they closed at right around $63 or so. Now this is a company that is doing okay, and that's honestly the best way for me to put it. They're not doing great, they're not doing terrible, they're growing decently, as of the most recent quarter, they're now growing 7%, but profitability is tapered off. Now this free cash flow, I will say ignore this really quick, this is a one-time exception because they're about to sell a bunch of their buy now pay later loans, so this is actually a one-off, but even despite that one-time hit, their free cash flow is still down year over year. If you look at their actual earnings per share, it's hard to compare it to the 
this one-off quarter that they had last year. It looks amazing compared to that. But in retrospect, if you ignore this one-off quarter, their earnings per share is pretty much flat. Pretty much putting up the same number example. Looking at the second quarter of 2023, it's pretty much they're around the same numbers, all what they did of 2020 and 2021, and even the last quarter or two. So this is not what I'm super impressed about, but they have been buying back shares decently. The company is growing revenue a reasonable amount, and overall it trades at a fairly cheap valuation. It's not an absolute screaming buy in my opinion. This is not one that at these prices I want to make a $20,000, a $30,000, a $40,000 position. But I'm willing to own a decent amount of it. I don't think I'll really be buying any more unless it were to drop below $60. Once they were to get into the $50 range, then I'll probably pick up another 100 shares or so. And if it were to go lower, maybe even more, maybe double my position. But right now at $63, this is just one, not one that I'm super crazy about. If you look at its annual free cash flow, it's putting up around $5 billion. And if you look at the market cap versus the free cash flow, you can see that right now it trades at around a $70 billion market cap. Well, if you take 70 billion and divide 5 billion, their annual free cash flow, that's around a 14 price to free cash flow. 14 is cheaper, it's not bad, but this is also not some phenomenal high flying tech company that's growing 30% a year. So 14 is on the lower side, but it's nothing that's absolutely crazy. So right now, I'm just gonna own the company and hold it over the next couple of months and see where things go. Next up, let's talk about Dropbox. And Dropbox has been one that I've been holding for a while now. I picked up my shares going back to about six months ago back in February and March of this year and so far those shares have done great. Overall in the company we're up right around $5,000. We're down a little bit today and we're up around 35% on the company. Now those of you that know me I did hold almost twice actually over twice this amount. I actually held up to 1,500 shares and I booked some profits on Dropbox not too long ago. You can see that right here I booked around $3,300 worth of profits in Dropbox so far this year but this is a company that I intend on holding at least until we breach the $300 a share range. Now I'll intend on selling a lot of these contracts around the $30 plus range and I'll likely start to exit completely out of my position around the $35 a share mark. Now this is one that has been doing really good and it is one that has laid off a ton of employees and I expect profitability on the back half and especially early into next year to really go up. You'll look here at their expenses and if we segment out everything except GNA, which is general and administrative, you can see that year over year, their GNA went up from 55.3 million up to 60 million, and it looks bad. It looks like it's growing about 10% year over year, but that's actually one time severance cost, but the company actually laid off about 16% of its employees, which means not only does the cost of paying salaries go down, but that means also, its stock-based compensation will likely go down as well. Because this has actually been growing about 12% year over year, but you can see last year around this time they were doing 85 million, and then they did 86, and then it did 87, and then it started to go down to 76, and then they had one-time severance packages, which took it back up to 95. And if this is any indication of where the stock-based comp will be going over time, I think this company will likely downtrend in stock-based comp, likely back to around the 70 to $60 million uh, stock-based comp range. Now, not only that, but the company is growing free cash flow, once again, due to this one-time hiccup. They did take free cash flow down 10% year over year from last year's number of 205 to this year's numbers 184. However, if you were to take away that additional one-time cost of once again severance packages of them laying off about one-sixth of their workforce, this company actually would have grown free cash flow year over year. Now next quarter I expect to be a record number. I think it's going to crush this 245 number. I think it will be 250 plus. I think it will probably be somewhere around 260 in free cash flow. But regardless, this company has been growing its revenue and if you ignore all the one-time exceptions here, this company is still growing revenue steadily. Sequentially they grew revenue 11 million, which sequentially means on a quarter over quarter basis. And on an annual basis they grew revenue from about 572 up to 622, which is about 8.7% growth. So pretty steady growth there. Geographically, they're looking at a lot of their growth coming from the United States. Internationally, they're seeing little to no growth, and it's almost all exclusively coming from the U.S., as you can see from this chart right here. Now, this is one that I've been investing
invested in for a while now, and I likely plan on selling out around the $35 range to sell completely out. But honestly, what I'm really looking for is this company to finally be valued at a level that I think it should be. Now we talked earlier about price of free cash flow, and this is a perfect example. The company trades at about a $10 billion market cap, and the company is expected to do $0.84 billion in free cash flow. Now if you take that price, and you take $10 billion divided by 0.84, the company trades at a price to free cash flow right now, just under a 12. And a 12 is not bad whatsoever, considering this is a company that is growing faster than the company we just looked at, PayPal. This is a company that's also expected to reduce expenses over the next year. Not even over the next year, but over the next quarter or two. So this company is growing faster than a company like PayPal. They have a lot less headwinds, in my opinion, and a lot less competition, and they're expected to reduce expenses. However, they have gone up a lot. Year to date, they're up 22%. Over the last year, they're up 15. And when I was buying this company around the $20 a share range, once again, my average price is 20.64. When I was buying this company down here, right around where my mouse is, it is now a lot higher. Now, even though it's went up a ton, it's not overpriced. It's not wildly uh, at levels that are just ridiculous, but it's also not as cheap as it used to be. So once we reach $30, and especially around the $35 a share range, that's probably when I'll completely exit out. And that's when I intend to honestly walk away from Dropbox and probably never own it again, unless it were to drop back down to reasonable levels where I want to buy it again, probably around the you know below $30 range again, around 25, 30, something like that. Lastly, we have the big position, Crocs. Now I'm gonna make a completely dedicated video to this like I did a couple weeks ago, but honestly, Crocs, in my opinion, is one that's really funny because if you look at their revenue growth year over year, this company's doing all-time highs in record, uh, record revenue. They've done 11% growth year over year from last year's 964 million to this year's 1.07 billion in free cash, or excuse me, revenue. Free cash flow has just skyrocketed. It's went through the ceiling. It's over doubled from 136 up to 296. Let me say, say that again. They went from 136 to 296. What about their debt? Let's look at their long-term debt. The big risk of where I was investing in this company a year ago, back when I originally bought my position, one year ago, this company had long-term debt of 2.69 billion, and they've reduced that 2.69 all the way down to 1.95. That's a pretty considerable amount of their debt paid off just one year ago, and this company is making further and further headwinds, or excuse me, tailwinds towards paying off that debt. Now, if you look at their cash pile, funny enough, once again, it is actually right around the same pile that it was one year ago, 187 to 166, a slight little downturn, but considering that they paid off hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars of debt. This actually uh, reminds me they announced a refinancing of this debt uh, just today. I haven't even got to look into the details of it yet, so I might be following up on that if it's something important. But this company is also announcing share buybacks returning right now, this quarter here in quarter three. They started in July buying back shares again, and these shares outstanding right now of around 62, 63 million, I think are gonna start steadily going down to make the company more attractive. Speaking of which, earnings per share. This company is growing earnings per share as well. Last year, they produced 2.58, and they grew it 31% up to 3.39, and all the search trends across Google. Now, I've showed this before, and I'm not going to spend a bunch of time on it, but I'll just give you the bullet points really quick. If I search the word Crocs, you can see that internationally, compared to about a year ago, it's doing right pretty much in line with what we did last summer. You can see that right around, let's see, June, July, August, it was doing around the 70s, 80 range, and we're doing around those numbers right now, 70, 80. However, if you change this chart to a world wide chart, you can see the dramatic uproar versus last year. Last year, this May, June, July chart was around 70, 75 or so. And this year, we're around 90, 95, 100, pretty much at all time highs. We hit record search results just the other day, just a couple weeks ago, the most that Crocs has ever been searched in the company's history on a global scale. And I mentioned many other countries, especially high population countries like China, like India, that are just seeing skyrocketing numbers, ridiculously higher than they were a year ago. And it's not even close. And if you even compare this to a custom time range so we can get a better idea of what this looks like, let me zoom in to just the last three years or so so we can get a zoomed in chart. This is last year's summer range, right around the 50, 60 range. And then we see this year's right around all time highs. So this gives me confidence going into this company's earnings over the next couple of months. And once again, like I said, this company 
trades dirt cheap. Now I get it. It's a rubber shoe company. It's nothing fancy. It's nothing awesome. But looking at this free cash flow chart, let's look at what they did last year. Free cash flow last year came in right around 500 million. Now so far this year, their free cash flow is dramatically higher than it was last year. The first two quarters of last year, the first one they did negative 108, and then the second quarter they did 136 in the positive. So they were about break even. They just did a tiny little bit of positive free cash flow the first six months of the year. Well, how have they done this year? The first one was about a break even quarter. They did a little bitty negative number, and then they did almost record free cash flow last quarter. This company has put up around $275 million of free cash flow so far this year in the first six months, and they're not even to their biggest profitability quarters, which is usually the back half of the year, quarter three, and especially quarter four. So if they can put up a number even remotely close to what they did last year, or even better, which as they pay off this debt, they will get more profitable once again. I think if this company can do anywhere decently half numbers throughout the back half of this year, I think it's safe to say this company can at least do somewhere around $750 million in free cash flow this year. And I think that's a pretty reasonable goal. And if you look at that, once again, price to free cash flow, this company trades at a $6.5 billion market cap. And considering that they could do $0.75 billion of free cash flow, this company trades at a price of free cash flow if that estimate is anywhere remotely close to around 8.6. A price of free cash flow of under 10, under 9 for this company is dirt cheap. And considering that the prices are this low, this company can start buying back mega shares. Because if you look at the stock based comp, they're around 10 million per quarter. Many quarters even less than that. We see some fives, some sevens, some eights here. Almost nothing, practically zero. So all the cash flow that they get, they pretty much keep all of it. So now that the debt is getting smaller and smaller, they can keep on paying this off year after year and it will get better for investors that they have more equity, but more importantly, they can start buying back millions of these shares at record low prices compared to the company's revenue and profitability that they're doing. So the way I look at it is two things. Either Crocs will go a lot higher and I'll make lots of money, or two, the company will stay around $100 a share and the company will continue to buy I don't know, four, six, eight percent of the company stock back every year just for doing the same amount of business. And I'll get huge returns on capital just from them buying back the stock. So that's why I own these companies. That's why I intend to own them. I won't sell Crocs. I probably won't even start selling shares until maybe around 130 is where I'll start to sell shares. And I probably wouldn't completely sell out to at least 150, if not more. Honestly, it's probably around the 150 range, if not more than that, that I want to completely exit out. So I'm really bullish on Croc right now around these prices. Keep in mind that I held Crocs earlier in the year, all the way up to the 140s, and that was before the company was putting up even better revenue numbers and better profitability numbers. And during that time six months ago, the company once again had more debt on the balance sheet, which they've now paid hundreds of millions of dollars off on, and now they're doing share buybacks. So this is why I'm owning these companies. That's what I'm doing over the next year. But other than that, guys, thank you so much, and I'll catch you all next time.